Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about some cinematic uh, camera movement that we can sort of fake in Premiere Pro. We're going to cover five different techniques you can use. They're all pretty simple, but I think you're really going to like them. Um, and it's stuff that you can do even with 1080p footage where we just scale, you know, kind of up a little bit. Um, it really doesn't detract from the quality all that much, and it can really add a lot to your footage. Uh, make sure if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the little like button down there. Also subscribe to my channel, hit that red button, subscribe. That way you never miss another Premiere Pro tutorial every Tuesday, at least at this point in time, every Tuesday, a new Premiere Pro tutorial will come out and I hope you love it. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So the number one feature we're gonna talk about is a pan, panning left, right, up, down, things like that uh, in your footage. Now, the, probably the easiest way to do something like this, you can see I just have this shot here, it's a time-lapse video where the camera's moving inward just slightly, but if we wanted to add another en uh, uh, element of sort of dimensionality to this shot, we would just begin over here. I click on the, click on the little clip and I have my playhead, not quite at the first frame, but somewhere, you know, just inward a little bit. We would come over here to the effect controls panel, the effect controls panel, and select the little twirl down menu for the motion section. And we're going to drop a keyframe by clicking on that little toggle animation stopwatch. All right, that's going to drop a keyframe. See that little thing right there? That's a keyframe. Um, now what we need to do is bring it over here, right around there. You can see it's moving our playhead down here in the timeline because this is our clip duration right up here. So if we move to like the middle of the clip. You can see we're at about the middle of the clip. I'm going to come over to right about here, and we simply just want to slide this shot to the left. So if I click on this little motion uh, icon right here, what that's going to do is give me my, th these transform handles and I can just click and hold down my shift key and just slide this shot straight to the left like that. Now the the most essential key with any of these sort of cinematic movements that we're going to fake is subtlety. So over the course of nearly 10 seconds, a little over nine seconds, this shot is gonna move very little. It's only gonna move a little bit. In fact, that might be even too much. Now, we want this to begin at the first frame and finish at the last frame, so I can just click and drag this keyframe to the first frame of my video, click and drag this keyframe to the last frame of the video. So now the video will begin. You can see the transform box there, and as the video plays through, it's gonna slowly animate over. So let's just play through that real quick and check it out. You can see it's just very subtle movement. You can see the PNB sign just coming into view and it's it's almost like you don't notice it's happening but it definitely is happening. I'm going to delete this clip here. This shot works really well for a shot like this where it's we're, we're pulled away. That's the Philadelphia skyline a couple of years ago and we're, we're up on this little plateau outside of the city and this kind of shot could be a really cool sweeping shot where you sort of you know begin with the tree almost out of frame and you just kind of rotate to bring the tree into frame or vice versa where the tree is very much in frame and you kind of rotate the camera you know rotate the camera to hide the tree a little bit so I'm gonna just gonna delete that video clip and we're gonna go and use a second technique here and that's gonna be a cinematic zoom very much is going to be uh, the same uh, the same type of technique it's giving me this clip and mismatch warning because this uh, skyline PHL MOV file is huge so I'm gonna say no keep my existing settings here uh, for premiere I'm gonna drag this uh, clip all the way over to the beginning of my timeline we can see we've got this video clip uh, that is it's really big it's quite a bit bigger than our uh, our little frame here if I click this in fact I need to zoom out and we can see that it's it's massive right so knowing that I have all that extra kind of video pixel real estate to play with uh, we can begin by just scaling this down so I can take my scale and say hey let's try setting this to like 75% and that's actually a pretty good guess let's go like 80% just so we have just so we know we have coverage right um, and let's say that over the course of this time-lapse clip we want to go from where it's really super bright to you know much darker and we want to simply begin to zoom in maybe over here like on the clock tower so let's again we'll start right out here just a few frames a second into our video clip the reason I do that is because it makes it very easy to grab that keyframe and shift it over to the very first keyframe I don't have to worry about messing things up especially if there's like a fade in out on a clip it might sound convoluted and it probably is um, but if you get if you get into the habit of, of creating animations this way it's so quick and easy uh, I'm going to first choose scale I'm gonna throw a, a little keyframe there and I'm gonna throw another keyframe over here but it's a uh, premiere is gonna auto keyframe so if I just say hey look scale this to like a hundred a uh, hundred percent let's say it's gonna zoom it in maybe I want to go like hundred and ten percent again this is breaking the rule that I just told you that subtlety is key right it's gonna really zoom way in and actually, that might not be too bad. 
Now, the important thing is, of course, we want to move our keyframes all the way to the edges of our clip. So the animation begins right away and the animation takes place over this entire 10 second period of time. But I also want to shift the positioning of the clip. So we start to zoom in on the clock tower here of City Hall. So this is going to be a job for position. So I'll begin with position here. Uh, I'll drop a keyframe and we're out. We're going to drag it back in a second. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is move over here when things are zoomed in quite a bit more. And I'm going to grab my little motion icon there and I'm just gonna drag 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 something like that again we're breaking the subtlety rule all over the place but this is more just an example of what I want drag my keyframes out and now you can see we have this perfect motion where we're not only zooming in in the clip but we're also zooming in directly on the City Hall clock tower now the reason this kind of looks fake is because there's so much movement going on. Really, probably what we should do is go back and this initial keyframe, the scaling should be more like 95% already, like that. Uh, and our positioning, maybe even we should move over uh, to the left a little bit and maybe even move it upward just a little bit. So let's try this here. So we can go and you can see it's just much, much more subtle, the movement of the camera, everything in the scene is moving nicely. So a nice sort of pan zoom effect uh, can be a really cool sort of fake camera movement you can add in Premiere Pro as well. Now this next effect is really cool. We're going to drag out this video of this uh, crosswalk in New York City. And this is just a simple clip. You know, it's again time lapse shooting right through there. One of the cool things you can do uh, is, especially, especially this works with aerial shots, uh, what we'll do is we will come in here and set the scale. Well, we'll drop a keyframe for scale and I'm going to move out over to here and we're going to increase the scale to like, I don't know, 113%. Let's go with it. It's just going to zoom us just a little beyond 110%. I'm going to move these keyframes all the way to the you know very first and last frames. And then what I want to play with next is the rotation option. So I'm going to rotate this again very slightly. So we'll go like four degrees. So I'm going to toggle the animation and I'm going to out here just set the rotation to like four degrees. Now, the reason that I scaled the image up is because see like up here, we're getting a little bit of a black corner where it's rotating a little bit too much. I'm not 100% concerned with that right now because we still need to move our keyframes all the way to the edges. So as this rotation happens, the video is automatically zooming a little bit and we're getting this really cool just like twisting zooming in effect. You can see how slow and just calculated and cinematic that movement is. A really cool effect. Use rotate and scale uh, in connection or in conjunction with one another animate them between two keyframes and you can get really cool effects. Again, it's just adding some interesting camera movement to an otherwise, I mean, it's a cool scene, but you just add a little bit something extra by adding that little bit of camera movement. Now, next up, the fourth technique is uh, sort of a subtle tracking shot. Uh, now this, I'm going to say, look, keep my existing settings. I'm going to drag my audio up to there, make sure that my audio and video are just right next to each other. So we've got this baby walking and the camera is already manually tracking the child walking, but I want to kind of accentuate the tracking even more. So what I need to do is first and foremost, zoom in on the video a little bit. So I'm going to come over here to scale and let's take it to like, I don't know, 110%. What this is going to do, and I'm going to zoom out here to about 50%. If I click on my motion button, we're buying ourselves real estate. You see that where we can kind of animate our video. So what we want to do is let's just bump out here a little bit. Let's set our positioning. So I'm going to set the positioning. I'm just going to drag on the positioning number and set it all the way over as far as I can get it. So we have all of this room here so we can sort of pan the camera to the left as the baby walks toward the left of the scene. I may even need to zoom in a little bit more than this. Let's go like 100 120% and scale this or slide this even more. So this is going to be more of a dramatic effect. Uh, again, as the baby walks toward the camera, we simply follow the movement of the baby. So here's what we'll do. This is a simple position uh, animation. So we'll go position and we'll come over here to about where the baby is leaving the frame and we, we will slide with the child. And I'm also, I think, going to adjust so we can keep track of the baby's feet down there so we can see where the baby's walking. All right, let's just drag these keyframes back. Let's check it out and see what we've got. So now as the baby walks, the camera will track and track a little bit more drastically with the child. And we're making sure that we always see the baby's feet in the shot. So this can be a really cool effect if the camera's following somebody or maybe not following somebody quite like you want it to. Uh, just doing a nice, subtle tracking of the subject of that particular clip. And really just because it's such a subtle effect here, I'm gonna select the clip, I'll bring up the, the uh, transform box here and you can see the whole video clip moving with the camera that's moving and just kind of keeping the baby 
in frame, sort of as much as possible, but also tracking with the kid, you know, keeping the floor at about uh, that level height so we can always see the kid's feet. Um, so, you know, again, use this effect as you see fit. The idea is that you're simply tracking across the scene and following the baby. Really, if you could follow that much, that'd be great. But, you know, we'd have to zoom the video huge in order to fill in that much. And we would obviously lose a lot of clarity in the video itself. So I'm going to delete this video clip and we'll move on to the fifth and last sort of cinematic fake camera movement you can create in Premiere Pro. And that is going to be uh, actually kind of moving the camera in 3D space a little bit. I'm going to keep these uh, existing settings and we'll see here that we have a little bit of extra room to play with here with this shot as well right off the bat I'm gonna scale this image up so I'll go like 110 to 115 percent the idea is gonna be I'm gonna actually shift it too as well so we can see these rocks the idea is gonna be that we want the camera to look like it's pushing forward out over these rocks and maybe tilting a little bit just to kind of accentuate the fact that we're in 3d space right uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll actually zoom this back out now we're going to zoom out just a little bit, maybe like, maybe right about there. 106 uh, on the scale is great. We're going to drop our keyframe right there. So I'll just make sure I drop a keyframe. And then I'll come out to here and I will drop another keyframe. But this I'm going to bring up to like 100 and I don't know, let's go 111 on the scale. So just like this, and let's bring our keyframes to the first and last frames. Just like this, we have a very subtle camera movement over 10 seconds. You can see how it's just sliding, sliding up to these rocks and kind of past the rocks a little bit. Now, in order to really take this effect you know, over and above, we're going to go to effects. We're going to go to video effects. We'll come down here and choose perspective and we're going to use the basic 3d effect. Just drag and drop it on your uh, video clip. Now I'm going to come out here at about the, you know, where I can get a hold of that keyframe. We're interested in the tilt. So you can see here, if I apply a tilt to this image, you can see how it starts to tilt and like lay the image forward or swing it backward. A uh, swivel is also, by the way, interesting. Let's set that back to zero. So we're not messing anything up. Swivel is interesting too, because you can sort of swivel like this. Um, and actually a swivel might be interesting. Well, whatever. We're not going to let's not get distracted here. Um, now, I should also mention too, distance to image. We could have used this uh, to zoom in as well instead of just using scale. But I want to keep things simple here. But just know you do have distance and you can see you have your little toggle animation stopwatch to set keyframes for any one of these. So let's begin with the tilt of zero. I'm going to drop a keyframe and let's move out to here and I'm going to set the tilt. Let's see what looks decent here. Let's just rotate this. I probably want to tilt that way something like that would probably work and eh, let's go like negative 15 on the tilt just so we're not completely opening up the sky uh, and if we need to with our positioning we can position upward a little bit yeah I'm just gonna drag this upward a tiny bit just so we make sure we're not losing anything I'm gonna drag this keyframe to my first frame this keyframe to the last frame of this clip and let's check this out so you can see here as the camera moves forward these rocks are almost swinging underneath what would be that camera that's actually moving in 3D space. So you could help really sell an effect. And if I speed the effect up, you can see how it just kind of like whoop, slides right up over those rocks, just like that. So again, the key with these effects is subtlety. And subtlety is always really a good thing, but especially when you're dealing with cinematic stuff. Um, other than that shot we did, we were zooming in and kind of really making things uh, move a little faster than they should have been. But again, the longer your video clip, the more you can kind of stretch things out over the course of it. And the more frames your animation is taking place over the course of, well, the smoother and, and less obvious, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. You want your effect to be less obvious and just kind of takes place and transforms that still shot or that, that, that frame, that series of frames right there in front of your viewer's eye. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you think you've learned a thing or two, again, hit the little like button, make sure you share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel so you never miss another video in the future. We're creating five different fake camera movements in Premiere Pro very quickly. These are all very simple camera movements, by the way. We can get more advanced with some of the camera movements in uh, the future. But five very simple fake camera movements in Premiere Pro. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tudvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.